I just had a Truman moment. I came by here yesterday, and this dude was putting those cardboard boxes in that blue bin. Hello? Ha ha ha. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Ever feel like you're in the Truman Show, people? There's always someone watching you, you know? There's always someone watching you. Now, most of you will have a good handle on empathy. And another simile for empathy is confluence. When we are in confluence with someone, then we pretty well, you know, like a hand in a glove with someone. And when you are in empathy with someone or in confluence, then your disposition, your hearts, your minds, and maybe your spirit will have a close allegiance with that person. Now, when we have this close allegiance, then we don't do a, we don't need to do a lot of talking. We don't need to do a lot of explaining, do we? We don't keep needing to say, "Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean?" and asking the person to uh, vocalise what they think you mean, just to make sure. You don't need to do that uh, because um, you know we're pretty well in tune, aren't we? And as partners, we can even get some level of telepathy going on where you're thinking the same and you say something and your partner goes I was just going to say that or I thought you was going to say that and all this sort of stuff so when we look at those things uh, there's a certain simile there to those things as there is to let's say uh, being in um, the, the heart and soul of any given religion because you need to have a confluence you, you need to have empathy you need to um, uh, have uh, this certain je ne sais quoi to meld into that religion now you could say belief but it isn't really belief you could say faith well it may be faith um, let's have a look what faith really means because most people who say they have faith and that you need faith um, to believe in God because if you try to analyse it rationally it doesn't work why doesn't rationalising God work well because God is outside outside of rational thought I think um, that's the best way to explain it. Um, God, or any God, doesn't subscribe to human rational thought. Um, why would God do that? After all, he's created us, and supposedly, and um, he's over and above us, and so how and why should we consider that he's the same, com comes under the same jurisdiction? And rational thinking no so this is why people need faith because they don't understand God they can't work God out uh, and if they try to intellectualize God it doesn't work so what do you do you have to let go of your intellectualizing and you just have to cling fast to faith and if you ask people what faith is they wouldn't really know uh, I've done it so I can speak from experience I've asked many people what faith is and every single one of them go ooh, ooh, now you've got me and so they couldn't answer me so I gave them time I gave them in some instances two weeks 
uh, to flick through every page in the Bible to see if it said it in there. And it doesn't. It, the Bible doesn't explain faith. Uh, then, you know, by Googling what faith is, uh, that's not really doing it. You know, you have to know faith, you see. And if these people didn't really know faith, then they couldn't explain it. And so I didn't know faith. I couldn't work faith out. Uh, I pondered faith for many, many months, years. I pondered faith for years. And um, in, in, until in the end, I thought, well, I've just got to get to the bottom of this faith. Uh, I need to know what it is. I need to know what millions and millions of people uh, say they have. Um, and are, are in allegiance with and will die and kill for. I want to know what that faith is because it is a big deal, people. It's a real big deal. So, uh, having read the Bible in its entirety, many times, many times, studied the Bible and all different sorts of religious scripture uh, for many years um, and never really found conclusively what... Um, the notion of faith really meant and so I resigned myself to the fact that well faith can't be intellectualized like God can't and so I thought well the only way I'm going to find out what faith is then uh, is if I have it how do I try and obtain it well you have to blindly believe I'm like damn I'm rubbish at blind believing I'm really, really rubbish at blind belief. How am I going to do that? So I started to ask the man in the sky. I started to say, God, Jesus, can you help me out, mates? I'm trying to get into this faith thing so I can know you in my heart. How do I do it? Can you help? It says in your books that... If we ask you to bless us with something, then it is your covenant with us. If we believe in you, that you must supply us with whatever it is we are requesting. And I'm like, ooh, caught between the devil and the deep blue sea here, struggling. So I said, God, how can one have faith if one simply doesn't believe, if one has a very rational mind and has never lent itself to faith, well, a little voice somewhere in my mind and heart said, well, try it. Just try it. So I thought, well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so I'll try it. And I did try it. And I tried it, I suppose, for about six weeks. But bearing in mind now, I'd been reading every single day religious scripture, biblical scripture, and all this different sort of stuff for a solid six months. And I'd already read the Bible twice and listened to hundreds and hundreds of biblical scholars. So I know something about it. But I just couldn't find... Uh, that connection with me uh, and God and Jesus of the Bible. Because I used to say to um, uh, believers in Christ and uh, Jehovah, I used to say, look, I've done all this study and, um, you know, I've had lots of spiritual experiences and um, I probably know equally amount of what you know about the Bible, probably more in lots of occasions, and yet, I can't find uh, the veracity of what this faith is. And I spoke to several pastors, and um, they were telling me, well, you know, um, it's kind of like this, and it's kind of like that, and, um, you know, it's just belief. You've just got to believe. You've just got to have, have faith. You've just got to trust, trust in God. And I said, it sounds a little bit like hope. Is it like hope? And they went... It's more than hope. I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's kind of like you hoping that there's a God. Because you don't know there's a God, do you? None of you have told me you know there's a God. But I could tell you stories whereby I should be able to say that I know there's a God. 
because I've been spoken to by Jehovah, Jesus, and I've had encounters with the devil and I've had angels visit me. So I should be a devout Christian. I should have the deepest of faith. But then I started to think to myself, well, I don't need faith. That's the thing. I don't need faith. But before I speak about that, let me just go back a little bit to this six week period whereby I never had that penny drop. I thought, well, you know, I've been learning all about this and speaking to loads of people, listening to loads of people, and yet I don't feel this faith. I, I can't feel it. It's just an idea to me. It's just an idea, just the same as anything else is an idea. And so, the still voice in the head then, so we'll try it. So I thought, okay, I'll try it. So I was praying every day, and I was reading the Bible every day, and I was speaking to Christians every day, and uh, what I was doing, people, is I, I was self-hypnotizing. Because I'm a trained uh, hypnotherapist, I know how that works. Because I have uh, deep psychological inclinations, I know how propaganda works. I know how wish fulfillment works. I know how if we think and desire something so very deeply, then the chances are, via law of attraction, the universe will deliver it to us. So I'm thinking, well, I think it's kind of like all those things. If I really, really wanted Jesus in my life, if I needed Jesus, if I felt like I needed that love and that companionship and, you know, Jesus to walk with me and all these things, how wonderful that would be. Uh, well, if I needed that, well, all I'd really need to do was just to think about it every day, pray, talk to Jesus and God, and I suppose eventually the universe would give it to me. Sounds feasible, doesn't it? Yes. On top of that, people, when we read and read and read and read religious scripture and we don't read anything else um, outside of that I, I, I for solid six months solidly I was concentrating on um, uh, Judaism and Christianity and reading all different sorts of uh, literature from uh, very well renowned uh, biblical scholars and I was in the groove and I was seeing it uh, logically from where they were coming from, but um, I was struggling with the feeling of it. So I thought then, well, the, the, the hypnosis, the wishful thinking, the law of attraction, and um, all those things compiled together, it must work. So I did this for six weeks, and what I discovered was that more and more, it did work. More and more, I started to feel um, a closeness to that spirit uh, when I was asking God and Jesus for things they made manifest not physical things because I never asked for anything physical um, you know I'm not the sort of person give me a million dollars you know I, I, I was asking um, for uh, solutions solutions and um, spiritual guidance and things like that and whether it was God or Jesus or whether it was my higher self whether it was cosmic consciousness whether it was my unconscious whatever agency uh, we can call upon you see there's so many different trains of thought which will speak about different uh, agencies within us uh, that it's difficult to know which is which and so, well, what do we do? If you're a psychoanalyst, then you would consider that it's your unconscious delivering or whatever it is you've been asking for. If you're a spiritualist, uh, then the spiritualist would say, well, it's cosmic consciousness that delivered it to you. Um, if you were uh, a Buddhist and um, your meditation and your, your deep in contemplation and... Um, um, if something manifests supernatural then you'd say well it's the cosmos because in Buddhism you're not supposed to be asking or desiring anything so you know that wouldn't work you couldn't start praying or asking or wishing for things in, in your meditations because uh, you're supposed to have this level of acceptance of what things are and completely eradicate all your desires and all that sort of thing 
But um, Christianity is different because uh, whatever you ask Jesus for, uh, then there is a covenant with him and you. And so, okay. So I was asking. Uh, I, I just say on occasions, I, I look up in the sky and I say, look, I, I've got a bit of a problem, conundrum here, God. Uh, you know, can you help me out with this one? Um, and I asked the question, um, can you tell me what the difference is between belief and faith? And within a split second, a whole scenario came through my mind as clear as day, along with the vision in the clouds of a bridge. There was a bridge in the clouds. I've never seen anything like it before, probably never seen anything like it again um, for the rest of my life. But it was a bridge which was flat on the bottom uh, and curved on the top and the archway, very, very clear and distinct, uh, going through. Um, the point, the point is I'm the devil. I, I'm not the devil, OK? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just a guy blogging. Come on. Fucking hell. Um, you know what to say about dogs. Um... So, yeah, I saw it, and I had it in here, and I got the answer, and it's like, oh, wow, isn't that incredible? There certainly is something to this. And then something else really, really bizarre happened that night. I was talking to somebody, and um, um, I, I, I told him that my uh, handle at that time was Zen, uh, uh, on account of my doing a lot of meditating. And uh, so he said, oh, I've got a book on my shelf uh, with your name on it. He said, you want it? He said, someone gave it to me uh, about a few months ago, and I probably won't get around to reading it. Not really my thing. So I said, yeah, I'd love it. So I took that book, and uh, I started reading it that night. And as I got into it, um, I don't know, score of pages or something like that, uh, there was an explanation as to exactly what faith was and what's the difference between faith and belief. I looked at this in this book and I just put it down and I'm like, this cosmos is very, very bizarre. Synchronicity. That was synchronicity. Not only was the synchronicity of the God thing in the clouds, the, the bridge in the clouds, and the, the, the uh, speaking to me, telling me exactly when I'd asked God. Um, then I get someone give me this book with my handle on it, my name. Uh, and then I read it, and it, and it said exactly what my conundrum had been for this past few months. You know, very, very powerfully, but for a long, long time. But I'd addressed it, and I wanted to really get to the bottom of it. And I got to the bottom of it. By how? Asking my higher self, asking the cosmos, asking God, asking Jesus. Turning my cosmic intellect towards it. Giving off that vibration with all the people in my vicinity. Who knows, people? You know, and this is why people say God works in mysterious ways. The universe works in mysterious ways. The universe is very, very mysterious. So when you've had very, very powerful experiences like that, and you put all the pieces together, it really means something. And so the more I was self-hypnotising, the more I was praying, the more I was, um, you know, being completely open-hearted as much as I possibly could, I was just setting aside my uh, analytical mind, my doubts and all that, and I really was trying to buy into it. And I was quite successful in my own hypnosis. And the more I did this, uh, the more I discovered that I, in actual fact, uh, did get into that vibration. And people started to reveal uh, stories to me. And they were saying to me, lots of people were saying to me, that they could see my light um, and they could say they'd come up to me and they'd say I want to tell you this uh, then um, and I've never said this to anybody else before but you've got a certain aura about you and it's a very powerful aura and it's it's a very benevolent and a very knowing aura and um, my spirit is attracted to your spirit. You know, I'm, I'm not being, I'm not, it's not gayness or, you know, they're kind of like all this because people don't really like to say, they're not comfortable about saying things like that. 
um, and they'd say to me, um, if ever you want to speak with me or you want to keep in contact with me or this, that and the other, I very rarely give up my details to anybody but I, I'm prepared to do it with you, for you, because of how I feel and what I think I know about you. Because I was always inquiring uh, philosophically into the nature of people's hearts and God and all these different sorts of things. And of course, when you're talking to a lot of people, it's just a, a filter system. Uh, you touch people. And I touched lots of people in a relatively short period of time. And um, so there was something going on. And I knew if I'd continued to do that, then I could uh, have a deeper relationship with God and, and Yahweh and Jehovah uh, if I so wanted. But I didn't want that. And I, 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 I don't necessarily want that. I, I'm not the sort of person, my soul isn't the sort of soul which, which worships. Um, I, I can't worship men in the sky. I can't worship things when there's too much conflict. There's, there's a whole bunch of conflict going on with the Old Testament in particular. But even with the New Testament, you know, when we discover uh, books like the book of Thomas and the Gnostic writings of Jesus, it just doesn't match with um, what it says in the New Testament. And so uh, I'm like, I'm sorry, uh, God, Jesus, if you are out there, if you are gods, mini gods, whatever, uh, I can't be worshipping you uh, because I, I don't know who you really are, to be fair. Um, and, you know, the, the answer could be, well, if you trust in us. And I'm like, I can't do this blind trust stuff. I just can't do it. It's not my thing. And, and, and I'm not a needy person. And I can't, oh, please, God, oh, please, Jesus. No, I, I, I'm like, look, strike me down with lightning now if you want to. If I blaspheme you, go fuck yourself, God, and, and took my cock, Jesus. You strike me down with, with lightning now, if that's what you want to do. And if you do that, then, of course, uh, all this uh, unconditional love and this, uh, all this wonderful stuff that, you know, some people say about you guys was evidently wrong wasn't it? So I feel absolutely comfortable in blaspheming so very, very deeply and vehemently um, because if Jesus is unconditional love and uh, God is and he loves his children, then it doesn't matter what we say, we must be forgiven, right? So I don't believe that we need to believe because like it says in Romans, Paul, um, the old business about you've got to believe in Jesus and if you do believe in Jesus then you'll be saved. I'm like well there's plenty of people on this planet that have never fucking heard of Jesus so go fuck yourselves Apostle Paul. Go fuck yourselves all, all, all you fucking knobheads that, that, that promulgate this around. It's a ruse. It's bullshit. I ain't buying into it. Because what you are saying effectively is that it's small children, let's just say small children, babies, who have never heard of you, um, you condemn them to death in the fiery Gehenna because they never grovelled at your sandals. I'm not buying it. What about these mentally retarded people that couldn't ever, you know, learn about Jesus? What's going to happen to them? Are you going to burn them in the fire again? Huh? Go fuck yourselves. So that's what I say. That's what my rational mind says, people. And I trust in my rational mind. I trust in my God-conscious mind, my cosmic conscious mind. Because when we look into um, all these gods and everything, well, of course, there's thousands of them. And so you, you read the Gnostics and they'll tell you that, that Yahweh was just a demiurge. He was just a small god, just a mini god, just a baby god. And as far as um, the Messiah, well, there's loads of these messiahs around at that particular time. The, the history books are full of them. And that, you know, there's just one that was chosen and it was just manipulated and this, that and the other. But if you're asking me, 
if I actually believe anything, then I would say I believe um, uh, some of the stuff in the book of Thomas, where Jesus says, we are all sons of God. I don't have a problem with that. Who would? I don't need a God to worship and to love me. If he's created me in this earth, well, fuck me. That's good enough for me. Surely he doesn't need me to worship him either. He's created us out of his love and benevolence. That should be enough, shouldn't it, for a real loving God? A God that needs you to love him and beg and bow down. That ain't no fucking benevolent God, people. That's the devil. That's the devil. So, those of you that have been listening to my videos, you know that I've got a lot to say on these things. And I'm pulling information from a whole bunch of experience and knowledge. Now, the whole crux of this video is simply this. For you people um, who watch my videos and are not moved by them, it's either because you can't be moved, um, or it's most likely that you are just not in the same vibration as I am. Uh, and I get it, lots of the things I say will sound very, very wacky and contradictory to most of you out there, but uh, to a logician, to a philosopher, to a real spiritual person, what I am saying uh, would be deemed to, to be very, very sensible. Because there's nothing which is illogical in what I say. Nothing at all. Nothing can be outrightly refuted as being complete nonsense. Because I can account for every single thing I say with a whole myriad of scenarios. Logical, reasonable, rational. I can tell you all the stories of where my thoughts come from. And why I say things and why I have an adherence with this, that and the other. And why I dismiss this, that and the other. And, um, you know, unless your, your heart is, is poisoned with, with, with some sort of um, hate, you know, when you have a, 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 an argument um, with a, a Christian or a Muslim, for goodness sakes, are you ever going to get any sense? Unless you say, Oh, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, or oh, oh, Muhammad, oh, bless your soul, and all this bullshit that they say, and, uh, oh, 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 oh. No, no, I'm not going there. I'm not doing it. I'm not that guy. I'm vastly above that. Vastly above that. Low-life, cretinous people are down there that have been, they've, they've, they've had their spirits contained, imprisoned. They're, they're not free. Their minds are not free. Their hearts are not free. They are all imprisoned by the Demiurge. And it is the devil, in, in actual fact, that uh, if anybody wants to set them free, the devil wants to set them free. And some people can join uh, the devil, Satan, with Lucifer. And it's very, very, very loosely inferred in the Bible, by the way. Uh, but, but most people don't know anything about the fucking Bible, um, Christians. And so they will say, Lucifer is the devil, and, and all this business. But Lucifer was the light bearer. Lucifer was like Prometheus. He gave light to mankind. And everything about the morning and evening star um, is light, is bright. And it, it was shining when maybe the moon or the sun wasn't there, you know. Of course, um, the sun is only rising and setting when uh, Venus uh, manifests Lucifer. And um, so, you know people's minds they're poisoned and even if they're not poisoned they're dull and they're not capable of thinking rationalizing things and they don't have any experiences to to really cling to to really stand by they have no personal deep inner experience because those that do well they, they could never have an adherence to that rubbish do you know that uh, Alan Watts was a uh, Christian Baptist for uh, about five years. He had his own fucking show, um, you know, with his own pastorship and um, giving his own church and all this fucking sort of shit. But he just couldn't do it in the end. 
he couldn't do it because more and more uh, he started to believe in less and less and uh, more and more his philosophy and his Buddhism and his spiritualism came out and um, other pastors and, and, and the, the hierarchical system were always saying to him you can't say that you can't say this, you can't say that but he wanted to say that so in the end he gave it up and he became Alan Watts but um, okay let me see if I can nail this one then now what I'm saying here is people that the reason why I'm speaking about this uh, the Jesus thing, the confluence and the faith and the, the, the belief and, and the conjoining and, and all that sort of thing the reason why I'm saying that is because it's the same across the board when we feel very very deeply about anything now let's just say uh, your family members you've got this confluence with your family members you 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 uh, have this love with them you have this affinity with them uh, and that's what people want with Jesus and God how do you do it if it isn't natural to you you see I have this love um, this cosmic uh, gift uh, a relationship between myself and my daughter and she honest to goodness is the only person on this planet that I can say I love and uh, so I, I say well why is that well it's because I'm genetically bound uh, that has to be a very, very large portion of it. Um, of course, she's my only daughter, and, um, you know, she's the apple of my eye. But over and above that, I'm cosmically bound, and I was cosmically bound uh, f from the, the very first day I knew that um, uh, her mother was pregnant with her. And uh, this, is, this is something that... Why didn't God give this to us? This is what I'm saying, people. If I, I know that I can love unconditionally, absolutely unconditionally, with one person, one person I've only ever been able to do that with, with all the partners and anybody like that, it's never been unconditional. Uh, who, who can love anybody unconditionally? It, it just wouldn't work, would it? Uh, but you can love your children unconditionally. Um, maybe you can love your parents uh, unconditionally as well. Um, I don't think you can love your brothers and sisters unconditionally, your grandparents or anything like that. But I think most certainly if we're going to experience this, we're going to experience it with our children. Uh, because I don't even think, to be fair, that we can extend this to our parents because uh, they piss us off or they have pissed us off or they're going to piss us off or something like that but with, with your children particularly when they're young it's unconditional and most people would um, die uh, to save their children so what I'm saying here is people if there is this benevolent God then why on earth didn't he endow us with all with that surely then all of our problems as human beings would be over if we knew that we we had an all-loving, uh, endearing God in the sky, all around us, uh, then that might be quite useful. And um, if, uh, whilst he was at that, um, he made it possible that none of us would ever murder or deceive anybody or, you know, do any of these things, find control. Oh, goodness me, look where we're going now. So then all of a sudden, well, what am I asking for? Uh, the perfect human being. Uh, would the perfect human being be interesting? I don't know whether the perfect human being would be interesting. I can envision a perfect uh, sort of utopia uh, like lots of people have where everybody's kind and loving and don't do anything wrong and uh, there's no reason really why that couldn't happen uh, and then all of our efforts go into providing for everybody and it's a you know it's a community um, it's a variety of communism socialism these sort of things uh, but you see, the reason why these communisms and socialisms didn't work in the past because they weren't um, inaugurated by God. They were inaugurated by man, and man's a liar and a cheat and a deceiver. And so that's why they all fell down. But if there was no evil in man's heart, then I wonder, you know, I think it's about time somebody made a film about this, really give it a lot of thought see what the ramifications are, see what the downfalls are, 
see where this utopia will, 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 would end. Um, what would bring it down? What would be the downfall if everyone was loving and kind? Um, I don't know. But, okay. I keep trying to get back to the end, don't I? I keep trying to get back to the point. The point is, when you watch my videos and you're just listening and they're not touching you. You see, there's been lots of opportunities for you to have been touched very deeply by lots of things I've said in this video because there has been lots of profound things, people. Um, a very clear, profound insight into the nature of these things. Questioning everything from as many different facets as I could and experiencing and, and doing trial and error and actually setting out to try to discover what something is when I didn't understand it. I couldn't feel it, you see. Because intellectualizing it, faith, you can't intellectualize faith. You say God, you can't intellectualize God. Intuition, you can't intellectualize intuition. Because if you said to what's intuition? Uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you, you just kind of like, you, you see something, or you feel something, or, uh, well, where do you feel this? Where, where, where do you see it? Um, uh, and it's all like this. Uh, it's, it's just one of those phenomenons, isn't it? These phenomenons. And so, when people aren't moved by what I say, uh, then they obviously aren't ready. They're not learned enough, they're not spiritual enough, they're not uh, introspective enough. There's a lot of things that they're not enough. And I remember about 10 years ago, and uh, someone, you know, of course I've been listening to Alan Watts for all these years, uh, and someone sent me a comment saying, uh, so what do you think of Alan Watts? And I said, he's never moved me. He's never moved me. But now he's one of the people that don't move me, but speak exactly to what I know to be true. Exactly. Absolutely on point. Alan Watts, absolutely on point. Terence McKenna, absolutely on point. Uh, and they weren't religious, you see. They, they didn't buy into that. Uh, at least Alan Watts didn't in the end. Um, because they're too big for that. They're too broad for that. They're too spiritually connected for that. Because religion is for the masses. It's like um, Karl Marx said, it, it, it's the opiate for the masses. Just to keep them a little bit tranquil and give them hope for the future in a very dull, boring, communistic life. Yeah, the opiate for the masses. So when people uh, say that you're not saying anything or, oh, you think you're so profound or you think you're so clever, I'm like, well, it depends who's listening. It depends who's listening, people, at the end of the day. And so because I'm long in the tooth now and I can look back 10 years ago and I can see that I dismissed Alan Watts as not moving me. Why? Because I wasn't ready. Because 10 years ago, I don't even think I'd taken any entheogens then. I most certainly hadn't had any of these spiritual, uh, supernatural experiences. I was just starting out. 10 years ago, I, I was meditating and I was doing uh, out-of-body experiences. Um, I think that's about as far as I'd got in my spiritual development. And um, so I wasn't ready. And so I, I you know, can only assume that the vast majority of you aren't ready for the things I say. And um, if you said to yourselves, yeah, I've got a feeling that there's something deeper with what this guy says, but it's over my head, then you you can archive me or you can I don't know 
go away and come back in a couple of years time when you're more grown and see what you think of what I say then uh, if you dismiss outright uh, that I don't have anything for you lots of people do they come onto the channel then they go um, they're not ready if they're looking for something you know which suits them they're probably looking for Rupert Spearer uh, or Muji or Sadhguru uh, maybe even Eckhart Tolle um, you know they're, 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 they're for, for the masses they're, they're for the masses they're, they're for the punter these people are for the punter and that's why they sell millions of books because they're for the punter because it's very very rudimentary what they're saying but I'm not rudimentary you know the things I say often people say I'm not sure whether you're mad or genius well it's a fine line isn't it it's a fine line but what I say in, in reply to that is well it's neither it's just a learned experienced insightful spiritually connected human being that he is pretty articulate and can convey from his heart what he wants to say and sometimes that touches people but mostly it doesn't and I can see that my subscribers are growing all the time and yet the views on the videos are not and you know it could be that I'm so prolific I put up a lot of videos almost every day and so let's say if I put three or four five videos up a day you know we're, we're talking like 30 or 40 a week and when people just settle down in front of the uh, the computer uh, for a couple of hours here and there in a week well they, they just get lost don't they and then they come onto my channel and then they probably think there's no point in me um, you know watching this guy's videos because it seems like it, 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 it's an ongoing thing. My videos are like, uh, 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 well, it's like the Truman Show, isn't it? It's like I am the Truman Show. Uh, you tune in and you 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 know uh, how I'm feeling. You you know what I'm reading. You know what I'm eating. Uh, you know how I live, where I live. Uh, you know how I exhibit um, uh, my emotions. Uh, it's a proper Truman Show. And so, for those of you that uh, can tune in, and do tune in, uh, most every day, then you're the ones that could appreciate what I am and what I do. Whereas people that tune in once a week, once a fortnight, once a month, my videos won't mean anything. Because they will, they will never get a gr grip of the magnitude, and of the depth, and the profundity where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the soul, people. I'm coming from the spirit. I'm coming from cosmic consciousness. I'm not talking to the audience of Rupert Spira. I'm just not in that realm. So, <sighs> I've made two videos um, about um, just one comment, you see. People can say to me just one line, and I'll have so much to say about it because the implications of one line are so vast and this is why I appeal to you people who have bought my book and are reading the book to ensure that when you read it you are at peace with yourself because if you sit down and you are carrying the weight of work or family or friends or anything like that then there's 90 percent thoughts uh, um, concerned and pertaining to that and 10 percent thoughts engaged in what you're reading and with a with an engagement of 10 percent you're never going to grasp the profundity what is between those lines people and so i've often said that reading there's two ways to read 
one way is when you're just reading on a train and you read a few pages and then you get off and then you're reading in your lounge and oh you want a cup of tea pet oh yeah i'll be out in a minute oh can you um you know put the oven on you're just in a you're not there you're not there people you've got to get into it you've got to remember exactly where you left off and then continue uh, on that story and then you get into it and then you stop yourself and you go what was that word what 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 was being said here do i grasp what was being said i feel that i've got a vague grasp of it uh, let me just google what that was because um if i don't know what was being said there then i'm pretty well lost yeah yeah i mean the, 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 the difficulty is people uh, for anyone to read my book they need to be quite broad in life and most certainly need to be broad in experience and knowledge and if you're a youngster starting out then uh, all the things I touch on you would have never even experienced them you probably wouldn't e even have come upon them uh, on your journey so far uh, but by the time you are very well read and um, you've had a lot of experience and you know you do have an insight into your own psychology and you are a bit of a philosopher and all these sort of things and then of course that book will mean more to you and it's very much like the, the biblical scriptures you know if you are not long in the tooth uh, you are not going to be able to grasp lots of the things um, that, that are said in, in um, those scriptures um, because they pertain to life and uh, I'm always maintaining that the Bible um, most certainly uh, the New Testament is um, it's probably the, the first cognitive behavioral therapy uh, manual uh, and according to Jordan Peterson then the, the, the whole uh, biblical corpus uh, is that um, and uh, probably even more profoundly so according to him in the Old Testament uh, now you see why does he think that he thinks that people because he, he is a clinical psychologist He's been a practicing clinical psychologist for 25 years and he's a professor and lecturer of psychology, uh, stroke philosophy. And so he reads everything with that mind. And so if he read my book, then he would see the profundity of what is written and what is between the lines. But if somebody hasn't studied psychology, knows nothing about their own psychology, and reads my book, then of course everything is going to be going straight over their heads. And so they're going to be saying, well, the beer's all right, yeah, it's all right. Or like the bit about, you know, when you at a cheeseburger. Um, incidentally, I don't eat you know, cheeseburgers in the book. But um, you know what I'm saying as a metaphor. Uh, people can only relate to their experience whether it's um, an intellectual experience or it's a physical experience. And so there you have it. And that's why I say that this is the world's first um, spiritual Bible. Because you can keep going back over and over and over again and learning something more the more you grow. And uh, you see, within that book, there's things like the uh, allegory of Plato's cave, massively important in spiritual development. There is the, uh, the Dark Knight of the Soul, massively important. Uh, then there is the Tao Te Ching, massively important. And then I take you through all of my personal experience of meditation, massively important. Uh, the spiritual experiences, the supernatural experiences, uh, the out-of-body experiences, how to do it. Uh, how to uh, leave your body and experience the actual world. Uh, then, you know, going into very, very deep and profound stuff with Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud, and um, a whole bunch of stuff, people. A whole bunch of stuff is in that book. And um, if it ever gets into the right hands and uh, peop uh, this people or person wants to promote it, uh, then it would enter uh, the bestsellers um, uh, market. But, it, 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 you know, books, they take promoting. And books have to be seen with people. If Jordan Peterson was seen 
walking through his car clutching uh, closer to God or a journey to the self uh, then all the cameras will be clicking and then that book will sell a million overnight which incidentally is what happened to um, uh, one particular book which was a very very obscure book hardly ever sold anything and it was written by some African guy and it was like you know some sort of uh, fable, proverb, you know, uh, this sort of thing. And um, it was photographed um, on Clinton, uh, Clinton's uh, desk. Or he was carrying it as he was coming out in White House or some sort of thing. You know, President Clinton? Yeah. And so then all of a sudden the book um, became better sold worldwide all over because everybody wanted to know what's Clinton reading you know what's the president of the United States reading uh, and so things like that have to happen uh, if things like that don't happen then you have to do a massive amount of promotion which takes time and money and it's a full time job and I've listened to videos of people speaking about um, what it took them to uh, promote their book and it, it was endless endless and they have to hassle all their family and friends and colleagues by repeating sending emails and reminding them uh, to, to you know write a review and how you read it and what do you think and um, could you recommend it and um, good god I, I can't do that I can't do that on that scale. I, I just speak about it now and again in my videos. And um, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So I'm um, coming through here because um, there's often uh, a lot of shrooms around. But they've just cut the grass and so um, uh, most of them will be mashed up. But um, there's a few up here. The yellow stainers. Um, and um, they're going old now, but uh, anyway, I won't bore you with those um, at this particular time. I guess you're tired of me always digressing and things like that. So um, I'll finish up here, guys and girls. Lots of squirrels running around. <laughs> hey! Who are you? Do you know me? Hey! It'd be really spooky if Providence um, came running up to me here. Is that my little girl? Hey, is that my little girl? It's not my little girl because if it was, she'd be looking, she'd be running over. But, Dad, this is so wonderful. What a wonderful, super intelligent creature. Beautiful they are.